Hello guys, welcome to a new video and in this video we're gonna visualize the character because I want to have something better than this. I've attached the file to this lecture that you can download and I have it somewhere here. So what you need to do is just to take this Unity package and drag it to the Unity like so. And you'll have a window pop up with everything we need for this course. I'm just gonna select everything and I'm gonna click import. All right. And now let me see, we have a graphics for the onion lad, the main character. We have the sushi that's gonna fall from the sky and we have a background of a four types which you can use, but I guess we're gonna use this one because this one suits the best. But I decided to include these in case you just want to use them, why not? So what are we going to do here? First of all, let's go to graphics, onion lad. And we're going to prepare the sprites. I guess they already cut it for you, but I want to show you how to do that. So I'm going to reset. I'm going to go here, click reset. And now it is set how it would be by default on the idle. And if I try to drag sprite in the scene, it's looking like so. It is very small. It is two sprites at the same time. It is basically not cool. So what we can do here, we can take this uh, sprite sheet. First of all, choose multiple and go to sprite editor hit apply here we can slice type grid by cell size and i think this one is 16 by 16 yes i'm gonna slice it hit apply and drag one of them to the scene now we can see i have only one sprite but still it is very small it is happening because of the pixel per unit we're using to fix this issue we can go to the spreadsheet again and choose pixel per unit 16. I'm gonna hit apply. Now it is bigger, but the another issue is it is kind of blurry. It is not sharp, not crispy. To fix this, we go into compression, click none, filter mode, no filter. Let's hit apply and see it now. Now it is better. Now it is nice, crispy, sharp. What I want to do next is to delete this file, take my player and drag this idle sprite to the sprite renderer right here like so it is a bit stretched wrong because we have scale changed so what i'm gonna do now is reset and it looks like so and color is a bit weird so we're gonna go to color and set it to white like so now it is much much better i also want to change the collider so we want to use box collider i'm gonna remove it but we're gonna add capsule collider 2d and let's change the shape of it to something like so. I guess this is a bit better, right? More according to the visuals we have. Good, so now we have the character and I can move around. And before we continue, I wanna say thanks to all of my Patreons and give special thanks to Friendly Robot, SKT1 Mighty Poppy, Steven and Gennady, Chen Son and Retrobat Gamer. Thanks to you guys, these videos are possible. Same as before, but he's not actually moving. There is no animation, nothing. How we can fix that? We, of course, need to prepare other spreadsheets, but I won't do anything here. They're already prepared for you. Just I don't want to spend time on this because time of the course is limited by two hours. So I'm going to skip some steps for the sake of saving time. Because again, we have only two hours. So now, what are we going to do? We're going to go to assets create folder i'm gonna name it as animation and inside we need animator controller i'm gonna click create animator controller and we're gonna name it as player ac all right now let's take the player and drag animator on this object i'm gonna move sprite renderer here so it is kind of together and this animator allows us to create animations on this object to see what is inside, we can go to Window, Animation, Animator. This is the Animator window now. And this all, what is inside of this Animator here. And this one is basically the same. That's what we have. So we're gonna use it a bit later. Now let's go to Window, Animation, Animation. And we're gonna drag this window over here. This will allow us to create animations for the player. Now let's try and do that. Let's uh, just click create, why not? And we're gonna choose animation folder. And here I wanna do player idle name. Okay, 
Now let's go to Assets, Graphics, find Onion Lad, find Idle and drag these sprites just here. Now if we click this play of the animation, we can see it's quite fast. And to make it slower, we need to change sample rate. If you don't see a sample rate here, you go here uh, and choose show sample rate. That's it. Now, because this one has just a couple of frames, I guess we can use sample rate that is lower, something like four. Yeah, this looks good, I guess. So now we have idle animation on this player. And if we go to animator, we can see that this animation is set by default. This is a default animation of this game object. And if I go to play mode, he's gonna just stand there and blink in this animation. Yeah, and even if I move, he's gonna do the same. Even if I jump, he's gonna do the same, right? So we need to fix that first. So we need to add movement animation. How we can do that? Super simple to do. Let's go to player animation. We're gonna click here, create new clip. And I'm gonna add, oh wait, we need a folder animation. And here I'm gonna type player move. Now let's go here to run and jump and take these two sprites and place them here. Sample rate can be maybe five. Let's see. Yeah, I guess this is okay. Let's try six, a bit faster. All right, let's keep it at that. And now our task is to make transition between these two animations whenever player moves. Because at the moment, this one is default and we don't have any kind of transition to player move. It just exists there. So what we can do to make it work? I'm going to increase the window size just a bit. We can make a transition by clicking right button, make transition to player move. But this won't work just like that because we need a condition. We need to know when to transfer to player move. So what we're going to do here? We're going to make a parameter here and I'm going to choose Boolean and I'll name it as is moving. That's what we can do. Now let's go to condition over here and choose is moving true. And then we're going to choose condition back, make transition here and back to idle if is moving false. We need to do some settings here, but we're going to do them later. I want to show you why we actually going to do change of these settings. So let's keep it as it is right now. We're going to come back here later. But now let's focus on this condition and this parameter and idea how we can change it. So if you think about this, animator is a component, the same as a rigid body or anything else. And if you could change details of the rigid body component, you can change details of the animator as well. I'm going to move my script above like so, and I'm going to open it. Now let's go inside of a script and make a variable private animator anim and we can get this component the same way we did with the rigid body anim equals to get component of animator good now that we have this component of the animator we can use it to change its parameters for example uh, let's make a boolean i'm gonna do public bool is moving and in the update over here or maybe just above i'm gonna do anim set bool of the name is moving and it's very important that this name is exactly the same as this name if it is small letter in the beginning small letter should be here at the beginning as well now we put comma here and set it to the boolean of the one we created is moving now i'm going to save it and go back to unity Let's go to play mode and you can see my character is standing. This boolean is false. And now if I click this boolean set to true, it will be set to true here as well. And you can see my guy is moving here, right? This animation is moving. I can click it to stop or click it to move. That's the idea. Now we can see there is a short delay. When I'm clicking it, he's not moving immediately. There is a bit of a delay there. It is happening because of the transition. So let's click this arrow, go to settings, and check exit time, because we had like 0.25 exit time, and transition duration should be zero. Same for another one. Uncheck duration zero, right? That's what we have, and now it will be instant. 
Let's try again. I'm going to click is moving, stop, moving, stop. Now we need to control this Boolean, not in the inspector with our mouse, but according to the character's movement, if he's moving or not. And I want to do something here. I don't like this kind of view. So let's go and choose here full HD 1920 by 1080. This is a bit better. This is the, like the most computers or and like anything, any device mostly have this resolution set. All right. So let's go to move controller and set this is moving according to the velocity of the character. This is how it's going to be. Is moving equals rb velocity dot x not equals to zero. So it says that is moving is true only if velocity of the character not equals to zero. So if velocity is negative or positive, he is moving. If it is zero, he is standing. It's that simple. Let's go and try this. Now I'm standing, I'm moving, and I'm stopping. Moving, stopping. Cool, right? I like it a lot. Now, there is a slight issue. We need to flip the character when he's moving to the left. Because at the moment, I'm running backwards like a Michael Jackson. But that is okay. We're going to fix that later once we set up the gun of the character. As of now, let's focus on what we have with the movement and idle. And the next step I want to do here is to change this code slightly to make it better, cleaner. So what we want to do here is to select these two lines of code, press Alt Enter, Extract Method, and I'm going to name this as Animation Controllers. And actually, I don't need to create a variable if I'm using it only inside of one function. So what I can do is to delete it here, and I can create a temp value, temporary variable that's going to be available only inside of a function. For that, I just need to declare it here. So I'm going to do bool is moving equals to rb velocity x not equals to zero. And it's going to work the same. And it's a bit cleaner now. All right. I think we're good for this video. We did a lot. And let's go to the next one. We're going to set up animation of a jump. And I want to show you a trick with a blend tree. So I'll see you there. Thanks for watching. Rest of the course will be posted on this channel shortly. Subscribe not to miss that. Check my website for more courses. Ask your questions in the comments below. And remember, we don't play games. We make them.